Big tech companies try to control what you see online, of course, but they also try to control what you don't see. A new report, a shocking one from Breitbart, exposes the existence of a Google blacklist for, quote, controversial YouTube queries, questions you ask on YouTube trying to find videos. The most flagrant abuse, not surprisingly, concerns abortion. After receiving a complaint from a political activist posing as a reporter at Slate.com, there are a lot of those, Google intervened to bury pro-life videos on YouTube and replace them in search with pro-abortion videos. For example, videos by abortionist turned pro-life activist Anti Litovino were buried, displaced by pro-abortion content from BuzzFeed and CNN. Well, in a statement, YouTube denied doing anything wrong and said any shifts were purely due to their algorithms, which of course are controlled by people. Robert Epstein has spent a lot of time looking into this question. He's a senior research psychologist at the American Institute for Behavioral Research and Technology, and he joins us tonight. Thank you very much uh, for coming on. You were the first person I thought of when I read this story because you have done, I think, the cutting edge research into the effect of search, Google search, and other uh, digital platforms on human behavior, political behavior. So what kind of effect could this sort of distortion have on an election? Well, Tucker would have a devastating effect, and you know, as you know, I am not a conservative. I do. Uh, I, I I love America. I love democracy, and I think we should all be rising above our politics here, and recognize the extreme danger uh, that we're facing when a company like Google uh, can basically censor uh, anything it wants to censor. Now, this uh, new set of leaks is extraordinary because it confirms things that I and others have been saying and writing for years. Uh, it confirms, uh, number one, that individual employees at Google uh, have the power to manually uh, remove material, remove content that we see, and they do so often with political ends. And number two, this tells us that Sundar Pichai, a Google CEO, committed perjury when he testified before Congress a few weeks ago because he said quite specifically that Google never does this. So, I mean, I, my frustration levels are so high, I don't want to take it out on you, but the first thought is, well, why isn't he being recalled back to Congress to explain himself or face charges? Because you're not allowed to commit perjury. But my question is, can any of us trust that the next election won't be swayed dramatically in one direction by interference from the tech companies. I guarantee you that this past election uh, was affected. Uh, I'll be releasing uh, some uh, some data on this, I hope, uh, in early March uh, that'll make the point beyond any doubt. Uh, I also just published a piece in which I showed uh, that just one manipulation on Google's part on election day, their go vote reminder, that one reminder, that go vote reminder uh, shifted uh, between 800,000 and 4.6 million votes to Democratic candidates on election day in 2018. So why, why isn't this the hacking of our democracy? I mean, how can you have a democracy under these circumstances? Well, democracy is a kind of illusion at this point because we have let these companies, Google more than any other, uh, go completely wild. Uh, there are no rules, no regulations, no laws that restrict anything they do. And again, the more one looks at what it is they're actually doing, and these new leaks help a lot, in my opinion, the closer one looks at what they're doing, uh, the more outraged one should become. And I want to emphasize, we should all be outraged, not just conservatives. Yes, I, I agree. I hope that what you just said pings around the internet, unimpeded, and winds up in the inbox of every member of Congress on both sides. Robert, thank you very much. My pleasure, always. Why is nobody covering this? It's a great question, and this question as well. Google's manipulation, the one we just told you about, why isn't that a violation of campaign finance law? The company's YouTube blacklist, for example, allegedly suppressed negative videos about Maxine Waters. Why is that not an in-kind contribution to Maxine Waters? Harmi Dillon, unlike us, is an attorney, and she joins us tonight. So Harmi, you just saw a guy plead to a felony because he paid off his client's girlfriend 
with private funds in the middle of a campaign. That was considered a campaign finance violation. Here you have the most powerful company in the world putting its thumb on the scale on behalf of candidates, but that's not a campaign contribution? How? Well, it is a campaign finance violation, and, and if anybody thinks that this is some sort of aberration, Google has been doing this and bragging about it internally, uh, even in the last election. Uh, Tucker, I think your show has previously covered the fact that Google made what I think one internal person at Google, a manager at Google, called a silent campaign contribution by turning out the vote and uh, contributing turn out the vote efforts in several states that were swing states for Hillary Clinton and specifically targeting Latino voters. I think people should be encouraged to do democratic activities like this uh, on both sides and help with elections. But when a corporation does it with its corporate assets, it needs to be dis disclosed as a campaign finance violation, declared and disclosed on the other side as a campaign finance receipt by the campaign. Here you have the one example of Maxine Waters, but let's just play let's just play this out. Now we have about 20 plus uh, Democrats running for for uh, the Democratic nomination. If Google decides to bump up the search engine results in a positive way for Beto O'Rourke in response, for example, to Democratic candidates for President 2020, and then bump down Tulsi Gabbard or some others, for example, that's going to be a contribution, a net contribution, in in my opinion to uh, those candidates who benefit from it, and a very valuable one. And if it isn't being disclosed as such, then that is a fraud on our democracy. And you can then imagine what they're doing vis-a-vis -vis Donald Trump. They're already doing it to Republicans, as uh, we you have previously reported with regard to search engine results for Republican women, for California Republican Party, uh, for various other Republicans. So. I think this is, uh, you, know, you know, we all think every story is important when it comes to Google and what they do online, but this is a particularly shocking and alarming story that um, we really need to see our members of Congress, senators, and the White House wake up about this issue because otherwise we aren't going to be talking about a democracy in the next two election cycles. We'll be talking about what it used to look like before we let big tech take over and control the outcome. I, I don't see how under these circumstances, all things being equal, Donald Trump can get reelected. I don't. And uh, look, I mean, I think we should have a free and fair election where people's votes really matter. But under these circumstances, we're not going to have that. I wonder why the White House wouldn't, I mean, they do control the executive branch of government, why they wouldn't have been awakened to that. But We have seen uh, Donald Trump actually tweet about this issue in September 2018. He tweeted about, uh, frankly, the subject matter of today's story from Breitbart. And, you know, people called him um, a conspiracy theorist that it isn't true. And you know, now we see the evidence that actually they are doing this manipulation and that Sundar Pichai lied to Congress about it. Yeah. But, but these companies skillfully spread the money around, not just to members of Congress, but also people working in an administration who are looking for their exit and exactly. thinking, well, maybe I'll work on the other side of tech policy and make a bunch of money advising Google on how to speak conservative Scary. to conservatives. Scary. That's, That's exactly how right. it happens. Vladimir Putin is a much smaller threat to the United States than Google. Absolutely. Harmi Till, thank you very much. My pleasure.